agent or anything like that, right? I can't hear you. Um, all right. Yeah, you're playing. Hold on a second. Let me let me fix this. So, here's the thing. For everybody that's on here, we're gonna get into something. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a good expectation here. Um, Rob, your your voice thing is all messed up for the day. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. You might have to restart your computer or something. Um, but anyway, here's what we are going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the perfect corporate structure. So Rob had a great question. And Rob, I'm going to start off by answering your question the best I can, even though he couldn't hear you. So the question is, hey, should I just set up my LLC myself? The answer is, the short answer is no, you should not. And anybody that tells you that you should, tell them to come and fight me. Like back of the alley, fist to cuffs are happening. Do not let people tell you that, okay? Let me tell you how stupid things are and how stupid people can be. I'll do a little screen share and then I'm gonna bring Alexis Morgan up. She's the person I'm buying a corporate structure for. So let's go to like Arizona. You guys should all write this down. Take notes, please. Arizona Corporation Commission. Go to your um, uh, Corporation Commission yourself. Okay, so if I go to Arizona Corporation Commission, by the way, don't go to LegalZoom. This is where people get into trouble. Okay, people are obviously legal zooms like, oh, I know what's happening. People want to start an LLC. Let's set them up improperly with an LLC. This will be great. Okay, so Arizona entity search, E Corp entity search. So you can tell I've searched this a whole bunch of times. I've done this topic, I don't even know how many times. I'm obsessed with this topic, to be honest. So let's search. Well, guess what? Guess who the, guess who the idiot is that started an LLC with his actual name on the LLC? There's strike one, okay? Never do that. Dumb, 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 dumb. I'm not, just because I'm calling you a knucklehead or you, you're dumb doesn't mean I wasn't dumb or I wasn't a knucklehead. I've done all these things. Don't name your, don't put your name anywhere on the LLC. Don't even put your family trust, okay? Like Carly, for example, don't go the Grunman family trust. Don't do that, okay? Don't put your name on anything. I know how proud we all are of our families, but don't put your family's name, your name anywhere on your LLC. And then look who the agent of this LLC is. Another dumbass. Here's one dumbass. Here's, a, oh, sorry, there's kids here. One dummy and a second dummy. Let's see who created the LLC. Probably another dummy. Who's the dummy that has their actual business address on here? Yeah, that's me. Then if you go down to the document history, Definitely another dummy, okay? Articles of organization. Oh, look, there's another dummy right here. And the dummy's address is right there, okay? Oh, and there's the dummy's signature right there, just telling everybody how dumb that dummy is, okay? All of this stuff is public record. So when somebody wants to sue you, let's say you have a tenant, for example, okay? So Shireen, you need to tell PCS, that you want anonymity, okay? This is why I'm on here. If you guys are using uh, PCS, we're gonna bring up PCS multiple times tonight. Startwithprime.com is the company that we use, okay? They said it's already been done. Great, perfect. Then it's already been done. Then why bring it up? If it's already been done, why bring it up, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna pull up who the organizer was of this. Let's see, articles of amendment, Basically everything on here is mine. Now here's the challenge. Let's go to the next one would be county assessor's office. Why is this important to have anonymity? It's important because now I can go to the, the county assessor's office and I can come and search in, I can type in PJ Morby. Let's do that, PJ Morby. Let's see what pops up. Ooh, I get, actually I did get rid of my houses. This is great. I did get rid of them. I got rid of 91st and Lemon. We just refinanced Lemon. So I currently don't have any more properties on here, but it took me about five years to get the properties out of here properly. I just barely accomplished, accomplished this. But if you go anywhere else, let's say I type in um, 2720 North Sterling Mesa. Let's see if that pulls up. Okay. This is what should pop up when you own properties, guys. You should have an LLC as the owner, 
And if somebody pulls up the address, let's say a tenant, the first thing they're going to do is the tenant's going to do an LLC search, or they're going to do the address search and see who owns the property. Well, we can see who owns the property. Okay. So that's pretty easy. Let's go to now that what they're going to do is your tenant or your tenant's attorney. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to come in here and go, okay, now I want to go to um, the corporation commission. And I'm going to see who owns saguaro cactus. Okay, this is why that all this anonymity is super, super important. Okay, so saguaro cactus holdings, who's the owner of saguaro cactus holdings? You guys look for the owner of it. You guys tell me who the owner is. You guys see any, any, by the way, this is not my address. This is a registered agent's address. So if mail goes there, it gets kicked back to whoever sent it. That's how they've been instructed. I don't even want to receive mail legitimately. Okay, so let's find out. Well, let's, I guess nobody's real name is on it. Somebody's name has to be on this. Okay, well, let's find out who the owner is. Oh, the, lo the owner is a, a family trust. So a lone Cypress living trust. And who's the o organizer of this LLC? Is that me? Who is that, guys? This is before I met PCS. I now have PCS sign all my stuff, but Danielle Graham is my organizer. My name is nowhere on here. Nobody can prove that I'm the owner of anything. Okay, so here's a quick little story. This is why it's important. We had um, a tenant. This is last summer amidst COVID. She played this funny little trick on her boyfriend. She wrapped the saran wrap around a toilet so that her husband or her boyfriend, I'm sorry, her boyfriend would pee all over the saran wrap. And, you know, they'd have a bunch of giggles together about his pee going all over my house. Okay. How did we know this? Well, I'll tell you in a little bit. How did, how did we know the, the, these intricate details? Well, what she did is she then, you know, they had their laughs. It was funny. And then she takes the saran wrap off the toilet. And what does she do with it? Does she throw it away? No, she puts it in the toilet and thinking she can throw saran wrap down a toilet. Crazy. So what happens is the toilet floods and it's on the second floor. So it floods all the way down into the first floor. And what she does is she then sends an email and she says, I demand for you guys to put me in a, in a hotel. Your house is leaking everywhere and it's causing water damage and I can already smell, smell mold. It's like, how is there mold when this just barely happened? So we get this email. My wife then goes on there on her social media and she deep, dive, deep dives into this girl like, Who, what's going on with this tenant? She's being really aggressive. She goes on this girl's social media and she sees a TikTok of her saran wrapping our toilet, doing all the things, shoving it down the thing, and then it flooding on the second floor. Okay. So you'd think that this would not really cause an issue because we could just throw this right in her face. But our attorney was like, don't tell her you have that information. Don't tell her you have that. Let's get her out of the property. We found out the boyfriend was a convicted felon in our lease agreement. It states that our tenants are not allowed to have third parties first off in the, in the property. And secondly, they're not allowed to have convicted felons, right? Everybody that stays at the property needs to fill out an application. Sounds reasonable, right? Well, this tenant doesn't do that. She just has a boyfriend sitting there and living in the house because she didn't want to tell. Why would she not want to tell us, guys? Why would she not want to tell us that this other person was in the house? Wow, y'all keys, keyboards are broken. Yep, violation of the lease. We wouldn't have let them in, right? So she lies. And what ends up happening is um, we say, we're sorry, we're going to send somebody over there. So we send somebody over there. Her, her dad is there. He has a hatchet. He threatens our, our plumber. All this stuff happens. Okay, this guys, this stuff happens frequently. A couple times a year, we have this stuff. We have three evictions going on right now. Three. Welcome to being a millionaire. Okay, it's going to happen. So what happens is, guess what? She is not communicating with me. She's com communicating with my property manager and she's communicating with my attorney when we sent the eviction papers. Here's what ends up happening. She fights us. It gets really aggressive, really nasty, multiple stacks of lies, all sorts of stuff I'm not going to go into. And we end up actually having a day in court. We actually went before a judge. And 
we then present our case, right? We then present, here's our social media. We have the screen shares. We have this stuff. We show it to the judge. And this lady loses her mind and she says, I demand to know who the owner of this property is. This whole time, literally four months of an eviction process, this girl could not find out who I was. So whether she can come and attack me for more stuff, whether she can come sue me for more stuff, the last thing I want this girl to know is who I am, where I live, and where my kids sleep at night. So if that alone, if that alone is not just reason for you to have anonymity, it costs nothing more. Just stop. Stop going out and setting up your own LLCs. I did it wrong the, the, my, most of my life. And I'm so grateful that I finally had my corporate structure set up properly because I don't have issues anymore. Okay. Um, correct. F, he says, who owns the property is the answer is not me. Right. Um, there you go. Sam Singh says, I'm evicting a felon right now. Anonymity and protection are critical for me right now. You don't want that per person coming after you. I have people jumping my fence in my neighborhood, asking my, my family for money. We have people leaving things on our doorsteps, all sorts of weird stuff. You, my wife and I have like even thought about hiring a security guard, like legit. Okay. So I'm not going to answer all the questions right now at the beginning. I have a guest that I want to bring on here. Okay. Is this good information? Is this the stuff that you guys really want to hear? So Rob Seema, you have an LLC you set up with your name on it. Should you be using that LLC? The answer is no. You don't want to hear that, but you know what? You've thrown away a lot of leftover food in your lifetime as well, but you didn't cry about it. You know what I'm saying? He's eating leftovers right now. How, how ironic is that? Okay. We've all, we've all wasted a lot of money in our lives. Okay. Bought the wrong pair of shoes. Instead of taking them back. We left them in the closet for two years and we're like, why the hell? You know, all the things. We've all done stupid things, okay? Live and learn. Um, can you use the bad LLC for wholesaling? I, I guess if you really want to. If you're, if, you're, if you're that, I mean, setting up an LLC is a couple hundred bucks, guys. You waste a couple hundred dollars a week on stupid crap. Let me ask you a question. How serious is your business long-term? Are you serious about your business or are you not serious about your business? If your question is, how can I save a couple hundred dollars to set up the most important part of the foundation of my business? Probably not the right question. Make sense? Let's say I'm pouring the foundation of a home. Is that something that you want to skimp and save on? Or do, is it better to skimp and save on maybe the tile in the house that you can change at any time? Right? Don't, don't mess with the foundation. Okay? Don't mess with the foundation. All right. I've got a couple amazing people that I, we're going to come up here and um, help out. Here's Alexis Morgan, everybody. She's the one that actually spurred us to have this conversation. So welcome, Alexis, to the stage. Everybody say hi to Alexis in the comments, please. That'd be great. I'm going to make you co-host just in case you want to share something, Alexis. I got to hang out with her until, I don't know, midnight last night. Her and about 30 other sub two students. It was great. What's up, Alexis? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm killing it. I missed my flight. <laughs> my three minutes i heard three minutes dude holy crap <laughs> um tommy thornberg from prime corporate services guys um this is who set up sets up all my llc's most of our students are with prime is everybody happy with prime if somebody's unhappy with prime say it in the comments right now we'll fix it immediately Give me out of a, give me a rating on Tommy. He pretend like he's not here. Is he a one out of a ten? Is he a ten out of a ten? Give me the true thing. He says he's not looking. <laughs> a lot of tens. Got some hundreds. Got some twelves. If anybody's under ten, we got to get on the phone. Okay. Jeff says his problems being worked on. I love that. Tommy's the bomb. Love Prime. Love Prime. Love it. Love it. Love it. Prime has got great. We talked the other day. Looking forward to speaking with Prime. Got it. Okay. So Tanisha, guys, um, I, I think Tanisha real quick, she's like the one that whenever she sees something, she's like, talk to Tommy. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's like one of the, my favorite people on the planet. She's great. Um, so a couple of things that are cool about prime. So guys, um, while we're in here, please do me a favor. Um, I'm putting the chat on pause for a second. Cause here's, what's going to happen. You guys are going to fall in love with Tommy. He's going to have all the right answers. Um, and you're going to say, what's the link to go work with these guys? 
The link is right there. It's called startwithprime.com. Okay. Um, they're the people that set up all my LLCs. When I have a new big, like I have a couple of big multifamily deals that we just closed. I just tell Tony, I go, hey, Tony, set up a new LLC. Is she setting up the LLC or is she calling Prime? She calls Prime. Prime sets it up. They take care of everything. They know what I need. They know what I want and they get it taken care of. Okay. So today what our goal and our objective is, is for Alexis Morgan to tell us what she's trying to do over the next 12 months and to have Tommy give a suggestion of the corporate structure she should have. Okay. Ooh, I like this. Yeah, it's good. This is a good one. Okay. I'm going to now turn the chat back on because I love the chat, but I want to make sure you guys have that link. Start with prime.com. Now I want to tell a quick little story. Okay. Because I get a lot of people that will say, I want exactly what Pace has. The answer is no, you don't. I hear that often as well. Not yet. You don't need that yet. Okay. So let's go into a, a quick little story. This is a true story, by the way. So I'm building a house and we had a budget. This is years ago. I had a budget of $500,000. What we really wanted is we wanted a house. And then we also wanted a guest house that was separate from the main house. And so, you know what? We thought we were really smart. We were like, you know what? We don't have the money for, for both of these things. We have really, you know, the money for this plus maybe, you know, one tenth of this. Actually, let me, let me fix that. I have, I have enough money for the main house, 100% of the money for the main house, and I have about the money, enough money for like the tenth of this um, guest house. Well, anybody that's ever done renovations, if I budgeted $500,000, do you think I stayed on budget at $500,000? Anybody? Bueller? Not a chance. No way. I like that answer. That's the, that's the right answer. <laughs> the right answer is not a chance. Okay. So here's what we did. We thought we were really, really smart. Now this is the bird eye view. Looking, I'm looking down. We poured a concrete pad here. And then we said, oh, let's, while we're at it, let's go spend an extra $25,000 on this other concrete pad for the guest house. Because at the time I hadn't gone over budget. When do you typically go over budget on a project? It's definitely not during the concrete concrete phase. It's usually during like tile finishes. There you go, finishes, right? All the granite countertops. It's, it's when the women get involved. That's typically the answer, okay? It's always in the finishes. You're feeling good like 70% of the way through and then you're like, dang it. You tell your wife, stay away from the house. It's true, don't lie. It's just true. I speak, I speak truth, guys. Yeah, Yaya Taya says, you feel it when you're about 75% of the way through. So that's what happened. We ended up having to wait like four months for me to have to come up with how much money to finish the main house. $25,000. And it would have been really smart because I didn't need this extra concrete pad. We weren't even planning on building the guest house for like two years. And I thought I was really smart doing it right then and there. But what ended up happening is this house went over budget by $25,000, about 5% just on the finishes, 25,000 bucks. So I had to wait four months for me to accumulate that $25,000 because I originally sunk it into this of which I did not need. Okay. Everybody understand this? Everybody understand where I'm going with this? So here's how it relates to LLC structures. You guys will hear me talk about trusts all the time. The trust is the guest house. Huge, very important, needed for, especially for my lifestyle. But do I need a trust today? Do I need a trust to go make money right now in this business? The answer is no, I don't. So what I see a lot of people do is they hear me talk about getting a trust and they go, oh my gosh, a trust, guys, trusts are invaluable. They will save you millions of dollars in your lifetime and so many fights, headaches, et cetera, with your heirs fighting over your assets. Trusts are so critical and they add multiple layers of other just kick-ass amazingness. Unfortunately, they also cost thousands of dollars. So is there anybody in here that's brand new that really 
wants to go spend thousands of dollars on a foundation that you don't even need right away? A trust is foundational, but it's foundational in the sense that it's more like a guest house. You can pour it at any time in your journey. Does that make sense? No, I'm not talking about a land trust. I'm talking about living trusts, family trusts, business trusts, those types of things. Land trusts are, we use land trusts, but not in estate planning, okay? Are we all, are we all on, the, on the same page here? Okay, Yatung says, what a great way to illustrate this. So what you're gonna end up saying is you're gonna end up saying, well, Pace, don't you have a trust? Yes, I have multiple trusts. I also have like 62 LLCs, but do you need to start with 62 LLCs? No, you do not. So today, the purpose of this Zoom is to tell you guys what you actually need to start with. Will that be helpful for you guys? Who in here has not set up their LLCs yet? Give me a me or I have not or negatory. Okay. Um, guys, there is literally no reason why you should not have an LLC. If you guys are serious about starting a business, here's the most important part about, in my mind, I like having three things when I start my business. These give me, I'll tell you what they give me. Okay. The first one I want is I want an LLC setup. Okay. And the reason why I say setup is because usually I don't just get one LLC and I don't think that's what we're going to advise to Alexis today. I don't get one LLC typically get two, sometimes three when you're first starting out. And I'll tell you guys why. Tommy will tell you why. Okay, I want an LLC. I want a bank account. Because how dare you go get a business but not have a place for me to send money? And then the third thing is I would have a website or some sort of credibility uh, package. Okay, credibility is super important, right? So a customer can see you, could be a video, could be whatever. These are critical when starting a business, especially these two. These are absolutely super important. So usually when I talk to people about their trials, their tribulations, their issues in business, my number one question is, what's the name of your LLC? And what do, they, what do you think their name is of their LLC? You know, Pace, I'm having a hard time starting. Pace, I'm having a hard time starting. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. It's actually a trick question, guys. There you go. Cody got it. They don't have an LLC. So let me ask you a question, guys. Are you mentally committed to your business if you haven't even started an LLC? If every time you go through McDonald's and Starbucks, you get a super size meal and you spend that extra 35 cents or whatever it is that costs you to get the extra large, that's really the cost of an LLC. It is so nominal, so inexpensive, right? that you guys should be spending money in the very beginning psychologically to get an LLC because it helps you get committed to your business. I can't tell you how many times people are like, I've never done a deal before. And I'm like, what's the name of your company? You go, oh, I don't know yet. I go like, oh, no wonder. You're not mentally committed. Okay. Now, same thing with the bank account. There's some sort of energy. Does anybody believe in energy? Like the energy you feel when you first meet somebody the energy that somebody brings into the room. Any blue collar people in here, it's like energy is bullshit, like I used to think. <laughs> Believe it or not, I used to, I used to be like, that energy stuff is stupid. Okay. <laughs> what kind of energy are you putting out into the, into the universe if you don't have an LLC or a bank account to even put money into? You're creating energy that you do not care, you're not committed to your business. It's incredibly important for you to have the foundation. There you go. If he says lack of faith, John Kim says everything vibrates at a certain frequency. Gabriel says not ready. Okay. Not believing in yourself. What if I fail? That's a, that's a good one. You know, what's funny though, is like I have had failures in business, but because I set up my LLC properly, I actually was like, oh, this LLC is not working this way. And I just convert it to a different business, but I keep the same LLC. You can do that. An LLC set up properly can be used, okay? So, Tommy, let me tell you, uh, Alexis, tell me about over the next 12 months, what type of business activities and in what state are you going to be doing those business activities in? Three, there's three activities I think you're gonna be doing and I'm gonna throw them out there just so you don't start talking about like, I'm gonna be not door knocking. That's too <laughs> specific, okay? 
wholesale, um, wholesale, fix and flip, or buy and hold? What are you doing? Over the next 12 months, I will be wholesaling and buy and hold and be uh, three to five deals. Awesome. Love it. So she's in Florida, Tommy. Okay. She's 18 years old. She just got a couple of deals from door knocking pre foreclosures, by the way. Good for you. That's I, I started, I was door knocking when I was 18. That's amazing. Congrats. That's also Thank code you. for he's Mormon. <laughs> 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 Pace is from Utah. <laughs> I am from Utah. Okay, so um, what what do we do? Like, do we what state do we start her LLC in, and what how many LLCs? If I want anonymity, I want a holding company. Like, how many LLCs am I going to need? Three. Okay, great. Why do I need three LLCs? So the first thing: Delaware, Nevada, Wyoming, and New Mexico have additional privacy and additional protections that other states don't offer. So like charging orders. Correct. Okay, we, we can talk, what we should do is maybe next time we're on um, the PCS monthly call where we do the Q and A, maybe we could talk about charging orders a, a little bit more in depth, but Wyoming has the best charging order statutes and they have great anonymity, right? Yep, Pace, Pace and I are both set up out of Wyoming for holding companies. So why would I go anywhere else besides Wyoming? Like what, is there a benefit to Delaware, New Mexico, or Nevada that Wyoming doesn't have? It's the same benefits, but Wyoming saves you a little bit of money up front and on an annual basis. So Ooh, I like that. And anyone in this chat that's working with us knows about Wyoming all too well. Okay, great. So most of your PCS clients, they're going to go to Wyoming. So I'm going to do a Wyoming holding company. And what is a, exactly is it is a holding company an LLC? Is it a C Corp? Is it a sole proprietorship? What is it? Yeah, we're going to start it as, as an LLC. Okay, great. Should we come up with Alexis's um, holding company LLC name right now? Or do you already have one? You should def I like, I want you to come up with it, Pace. Um, Create. What do you think? I, what I would do is I'd go knock, knock, who's their LLC. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're door knocking, I would do it. I would do something funny like that, right? Porch, porch rules. Holding. Yeah, I like that. You got porch rules behind you. I porch see. Rules. Porch rules holdings LLC. Okay, so it's going to be something, something holdings LLC. Guys, if you have some good ideas, <laughs> throw them in the side chat. She's 18 years old. Okay, she's 18 years old. She, um, her her girlfriend is into like energy work and astro astrology and all that kind of stuff and alexis is just into working and grinding all the time and knocking doors pre foreclosures um i like eric howells he says relax and door knock llc <laughs> that's really good um my uh my wife charges all of our rocks when it's a full moon alexis i'm assuming that you have the same thing going on over there I have seen cinnamon blown into the door on the first of the month. Super yep. interesting. Yep. And I've seen rocks charged in moon water um, created. Lots of interesting things. But, you know, I'm, I'm liking successful. these. I'm liking these names. So let's go through cinnamon holdings. I like that. Um, aren't you glad I didn't say but banana LLC? Full, new, full moon enterprise. Um, Shut up, Pat, Pat, Pan. Oh, shut, shut up and knock. Doc, uh, LLC. New blood mark, no, uh, new blood knocking dot com. I like that. Um, I would say Alexis Young Money Holdings is good, but the problem is you can, you don't want to put your name anywhere in these LLCs. Okay. Interconnected Holdings, Manifest It LLC. These are pretty freaking good. These are pretty yeah. good. Dude, this is how you start a company name right here. You just freaking figure it out with this group right here. Literally. All right, cool. So we're, would you suggest that she goes to Wyoming? I do. Yeah, Wyoming's, Wyoming's going to give you the privacy. It's going to give you the protection. Very, very easy to maintain as well. I, I think it was you, Pace, that made the joke that you could like send your dog into Wyoming and they'd come out with an LLC. It's simple. It's Ooh, easy. Yeah. It's very simple to maintain. Love and that. It saves you money. Okay, so Wyoming is a great place to have your holding company. Now you get anonymity. Okay, I know that there's a bunch of people that came in here since we started, but did everybody hear the story of why I like having anonymity on my LLC? 
Did you guys hear the story about my tenant? Okay. There are so many stories like that, but they're way, way, way worse. Okay. Mine was actually funny. I love that story. You didn't even give Laura the FBI credit she deserved from the TikTok. She did. Dude, I was like, how? I'm like, I, I know. know I would never have done that. Thought about that. It was so great. So anonymity. Um, it's also cheap to, um, to maintain because you have yearly filings. Now, when, I, when you guys start an LLC for me, are you also going to help me create an operating agreement? Yep. When we, when we structure any entity, holding, subsidiary, anything, we are going to take care of everything A to Z to mm. make sure that it's done the right way and everything's talking to each other. Yes. So Jen says, can you explain anonymity? So Jen, anonymity is privacy, right? Do you want people to know what your, what LLCs you own? Okay. You must, Jen, you must've shown up a little bit late, which is perfectly fine. Let me just show you something really quickly. Um, I'll make sure there's other people are joining right now. So this might be helpful for everybody. So if you go here, you'll see um, properties that I own. And you'll see that none of my name is on any of this stuff, okay? You can't find my home address unless you go to an LLC I set up way before I knew any of this stuff and you find out how dumb I am. That not only is my name on the LLC, that's a big no-no, but you also find out my name is the agent instead of a statutory agent, so dumb. Oh my gosh, fire me immediately, dude. So then you also get to find out where my, this is not my home address. I've changed it since, but you can track this. This is my PO box. Um, originally I set it up as my home address. Perfect. Okay. So if my tenants find out where I live, is that a good thing, Jen? Jen, do you want your tenants or anybody that, to, to know where you live? That's not really a good idea. Okay. Alan Lee says, why haven't you closed that LLC yet? Alan Lee, I think, or Alan Yee, I think you're overthinking a little bit, but if you want to go down a rabbit hole, I will go down that rabbit hole for about 30 seconds. Um, the LLC held property for five years in my personal name, and I didn't want that pro those properties to be transferred from my personal named LLC into a very private corporate structure. They were actually completely separate corporate structures. So I waited for this LLC to essentially sell, refinance, or do whatever with these properties so that I could transfer the net worth I had in that LLC into my private corporate structure. Does that make sense? Does that help answer that question of why I kept that LLC open for a good amount of time? It's because here's the problem. For a very simple mistake that somebody like Prime Corporate Services, are we cool to record this? Jonathan, I don't know why you need to. I'm doing this for free. It's on Zoom. Uh, if you're a student, it will go into the vault. And if you're out here and you're not a student, it's on my YouTube. Okay. Everybody should have this, this information. Okay. Um, you can go on my YouTube and, and hear this. Okay. It creates a paper trail. Guys, I want to move on from this. I only have a very short amount of time. I'm paying for Alexis Morgan's corporate structure. Okay. Um, here's the, here's the rock bottom, like truth. Stop, stop setting up LLCs on your, on your own. Jay, don't, Jay says, turn off the chat. Jay, I will never turn off the chat. I love the chat. It's my favorite thing. I love it. Okay. Um, uh, Ella Ray, uh, Ella, uh, is it Ella or Elia Ray? How does the Corporate Transparency Act play into this? I don't know anything about the Corporate Transparency Act. Do you know anything about that, Tommy? Yeah, it was it was actually from 2019. It's basically a law that was passed saying that everyone needs to show everything around their entities. So domestic businesses, foreign businesses, they have to disclose personal identi or personal information um, based off beneficial owners. But that was in 2019, and that really has been the case for everyone with the exception of um, Delaware, Nevada, and Wyoming. So Delaware Corporations Act, on the flip side, is something that still gives you that anonymity of what we're talking about and why that holding company Boom. is so crucial. Question answered. I'm glad that, that we didn't. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Great. I just learned something. That's great. Um, so, guys. Um, for the people who have never set up an LLC, do not set it up yourself. Every time you see somebody on Instagram, on Instagram Reels or TikTok or 
YouTube shorts and they're talking about how to sell, set up an LLC and they say, go to the corporate, um, go to your state website. <clears throat> Stop right there. The most important part of an LLC is anonymity. The second most important part, actually the first most important part of an, uh, an LLC is setting it up in the appropriate state for your type of business. Second most important thing is privacy and protection, not letting everybody know who you are, where you're operating, all that kind of stuff. The third thing is the operating agreement. Guys, I've had business partnerships that have fallen apart. At some point in your life, you will have a business partnership that does not work out. No matter how many books you read, no matter how many seminars you go to, no matter how smart you are, you will have some sort of falling out with somebody in business. It's just going to happen, okay? And so what I learned younger is when I didn't have an operating agreement, I had no, no way to sever the assets. I had no way to sever those relationships properly based on something that was in writing, Okay. I, uh, Brandon Shaw, must be have gone through this because I just recently went through this. PCS wrote an operating agreement for me a couple years ago. That operating agreement got me out of a partnership this January of somebody that was not pulling their weight. My operating <clears throat> agreement said, this is your jobs, this is your, your responsibilities. This is why you were giving, given ownership and equity in the business. You are not getting the job done. And it told you exactly how to get that person out of the, out of the business without fighting, without lawsuits, without any of that stuff. Okay, it's like a prenuptial agreement for business. An operating agreement is critical. It is very, very important. Okay, so those are the things that you're going to need with an LLC. And you're not going to get coached along. You're not going to be helped by just going to the um, state website. I dealt with an LLC structure set up incorrectly for seven years. Seven years. Was it, anybody feel like they've ever dealt with some LLC screw ups? Nobody. It's probably everybody. And they're just like, okay, right there. Stefan says me right now. Okay. Before I, before we start, when I was 22, I bought a, I bought land with a partner and we were going to build a house on it in Southern Utah. And I named that LLC lot lizard 206 thinking nice. I was funny because it was lot 206. And my name was on the LLC and we had to end up suing the builder. So when I hired an attorney, he was like, what's the, what's the land under? And I had to explain to an attorney, lot lizard 206, break that down in court. Very embarrassing. Very stupid. Don't be me. <laughs> <laughs> the name lot lizard 206 was brought up about 500 times in a lawsuit. I love that. Yeah. Not recommended. All right, so we, we, out, we know that at this point. So you're gonna need a holding company. Now, in the holding company, Tommy, am I gonna be operating business in this or is this just to own other LLCs? It is just to own, own other LLCs. You can, I have a bank account for my holding company and there's money that just sits in there, but you don't have to have a bank account with the holding company, you can but it is strictly there for your privacy, your protection, and to own your subsidiary businesses. Okay, great. So I've got a holding LLC that started in Wyoming. You guys help me out with all that kind of stuff. What's the turnaround time for setting up an LLC in uh, Wyoming? Usually about 48 hours. You're kidding me. It's pretty quick. It's like the wild, wild west over there. I love that. Okay, so now she wants to do two different businesses. So does that mean she's going to set up two different LLCs underneath and owned by this holding company? Correct. Okay. And those are also going to be LLCs? Correct. And are they going to be Florida where she resides and does business or are they going to also be Wyoming? We're going to set those up where you're doing business. So both of those will be in Florida. Uh, Carmelita, she says, is that your mom? Yes. Hi, mom. Carmelita says, so is your name somewhere attached to the holding company? No, it's not attached to the LLC. That's what protection privacy provides for you. Um, you know, this is an interesting thing. I think a lot of people don't realize that um, rich people don't own anything. I think people think that they, you own everything. You know, it's like, wait, if you don't own it, if you don't have it on, if you don't have your name on there, if you don't have your name on there, then who owns it? It's kind of, it's kind of crazy how this all works. So, What's that phrase, own nothing 
and control everything. Who's the one that said that? Let's pull that up real fast. I think I saw Derek on there. We got a couple now, but I think Derek was first. I like it. Okay, like so it. that is a phrase that was said by Rockefeller. Oh. Rockefeller, a multi, multi billionaire, even said, own nothing, control everything. Okay, so you control your LLCs, your name's not on them, you're not, you're not, you're not, none of that stuff is on there. Okay. So my holding company is in Wyoming. And the main reason why I have a holding company, guys, please pay attention. The main reason why you have a holding company is for privacy. Okay. Because most states do not provide privacy. This is why we go to Wyoming. And Wyoming or Delaware, New Mexico or Nevada provide the privacy that we need. Okay. Uh, Alex's iPhone. What about for tax purposes like write-off? If it's not in your name, can you still complete write-offs through that LLC? Alex, I own nothing in my personal name and I will pay $0 in taxes. I pay $0 in income taxes. Do you think that I write off everything through my LLCs? Yes, 100%. Everything is done through my LLCs. Everything. Ask me a question of what do I write off? Pace, do you write off your groceries? Yes, I actually do write off my groceries. I write off lingerie from my wife, believe it or not. Sorry, is that too much information? <laughs> you use it for marketing. I use it for marketing. And I also, Rafa's like, explain, I need to do this. I need to know what this <laughs> is all about. What's going on? Uh, if he says takes no, I legit do guys. And same, same thing, like you'll get to a point in advanced strategies. We'll get to those in the PCS trainings. Who's a PCS client, by the way, that gets into um, all the trainings with us? Okay, so do you guys want me to break down next time we're in these conversations? I'll break down all the things I write off and how I write those things off and where the justification comes from. Um, I'm a PCS client, but I'm not in the training. Well, Jasper, son, you're so fresh, dog. You will be in next month's training. Okay, everybody that's a PCS client will get the email. I promise you. If you are a PCS client, please make sure you are in the training and I will show you. I'll even, I almost want to show my tax returns. I'm having a major problem right now. I need, I have $2 million in taxable income. I still haven't written off. And I'm either like, I'm like, how, what do I do? I got to either buy six more million dollars in real estate or I got to do something else. I got to pretend like I didn't make it or I got to buy $6 million in lingerie. <laughs> um, uh, so guys, the name of the company for people that are saying they're si signing up right now, people are saying, I didn't even know there was ju uh, just PCS training. It's something that Tommy and I created. It's called prime time, baby. PT. PT, prime time. Okay. So uh, start with prime.com. If you guys are not a prime client, um, everybody that's a prime client, we will go through and we're going to do training on basic questions and also advanced stuff. We're going to be bringing in um, not only CPAs, but I, I want to bring in Greg, the tax attorney, bro. That'd be awesome. You guys want to get us, you guys want us to have a tax attorney come in and like talk about litigation and stuff he's gone through. You guys want to talk about some nitty gritty shitty stuff? He's got stories for days. Let's have, let's have him come in and tell the stories. He would love that for sure. That would be great. He's expensive. So you guys, this is something that we'll get an invoice. It's like this, uh, yesterday I had Sean St. Clair, my attorney come into the zoom with my students yesterday. I got a $1,500 bill for it. So I'm happy to pay this money for things guys. As long as you guys are learning and you're showing up, we've got 325 people here and 300 people over on YouTube. So a lot of people are learning. But yep. for the um, attorney to come in with on prime time, we're not going to be able to do that a lot. He's a busy guy. He defends people in like litigation. He's kind of a gangster, but we'll definitely bring him in. It's going to so, cut your lingerie budget. Yeah, I'm going to, we'll break that down. We'll show, I'll show you guys exactly how that happens. Also how I go to Disneyland with my children and that's a write off. In fact, I would be challenged for you to tell me what I cannot write off in my life, everybody. Okay. Okay, so th does everybody understand why we have a holding company? Th tell me in the side chat, why do we have a, yes, my doctor bill, yes. Insurance. Insurance. Sebastian says, I would have started with lingerie. Anonymity, privacy, anonymity, privacy for protection, holds the company. You don't want your tenants knowing where you live, right? Are, is everybody in here planning on owning a lot of property at some point in their life? You want somebody suing you personally or suing an LLC? Okay, so we now understand why we have a holding company. 
Now, Tommy gave you an answer to a question, which was, is there a bank account attached to this? Well, it kind of depends on your own personal use. I actually, um, I'm kind of similar to Tommy. I have a bank account attached to my holding company, but I don't even have a debit card attached to it. I just have some money in there. I literally just use that holding company as a veil of anonymity, okay? Jeff says, do you need to register your Wyoming holding company as a foreign entity in your home state? You can, but you don't have to. Every state is a little bit different, but that's why we're doing the subsidiaries out of Florida. That's a great question, Jeff, but that's why the subsidiaries out of Florida and still utilizing registered agents is so valuable because it gives you the privacy with your name and your address. And remember the holding company is there for the privacy. We're not doing business with it. It's owning your subsidiary LLCs that are actually doing the business. So the foreign entity is not necessary as long as we have the subsidiaries. All right, so guys, we've got about 25 more minutes. So I'm gonna go through this as fast as possible. If you guys want a lot more questions answered, I would suggest you come to prime time with Tommy and I, okay? Who's coming to prime, prime time? We'll probably do one first week of September. Okay. We don't know the time yet. Tommy's super busy. I'm super busy, but we want to do it at least once a month. So we'll do it first week in September. Who's coming to it? I will be there. Love it. Cool. Um, and guys, how do we, if, if there's people in here that have not set up their LLC with prime, how do they get to, how do they set up with prime? Start with prime.com. Okay. Does Prime suck or is Prime good? Because there's going to there's gonna be some knucklehead in, in here is like, no, I'll do my LLC next year when I build up enough courage to actually take a, a step. Eric said he's having an issue with tax, and I think I've already got him on the phone with him. I love it. Problems, love it, love problems it. have solutions. Make them happen. Get them done. Okay, so one thing I did wrong when I first started, as I started a PJ, I started PJ Morby LLC because I thought I was so smart. And I set it up in Arizona. So when you look it up, you can see my name. My name is like I'm si signature on everything. And you know what I did in this business? I did everything in this business. I did personal expenses, wholesale expenses, buying whole. I had like 40 rentals in this build business. Guys, oh my, Sam seems like what a rookie. Yeah, I had to do it the wrong way to know how to do it the right way. You know? Uh, Sessie says, I ran my business with a crappy setup for 12 years. And here's what I can say to you guys about having a crappy setup. Do you ever lay in bed at night being stressed out about, I haven't filed my taxes yet. I don't know what the heck is going on with my books and my finances. I know money's coming into my bank account, but I don't know how much and when. And it, it just seems like it's all over the place. Anybody ever feel that way? Yep. Me right okay. now. <laughs> a little bit right now? Yeah. Corporate structure sets that up and solves that problem. And then at some point, um, Brand Brandon Shaw, here's, here's, here's full transparency. I've asked Tommy and Prime not to promote their bookkeeping service, even though they have a bookkeeping service, because I don't use them for bookkeeping. Not that I don't love them. I just had a bookkeeper before. And so for me, I've, I know the bookkeeper I'm currently using, and that's the person that I suggest. Okay. I love so that. Tommy does have bookkeeping. Um, I, we also have bookkeeping over at start virtual. Okay. We, uh, Tony counts. There you go. Brandon Johnson says Tony counts. She's great as well. We talk to her directly. We, we all work together. We're, if you ask us for bookkeeping, we'll tell you no and send you over to Tony. Yeah. So if, if you guys end up using them for bookkeeping, great. Just don't get mad at me if you're not happy about it. Okay. Go to startvirtual.com. Do you suggest mo monthly reconciliation with an accountant? Tommy. I, I think it's a smart thing to do. I think the more that you understand your PL on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual basis, as long as you're setting the time aside to truly do it and you have someone that's breaking down the numbers, I think it's absolutely a smart thing to do. What I do, guys, is I, I ain't got no time for that. So what I do is I have my bookkeeper send me a Friday report of all my businesses and they say, here's how much money is going, what, here's what's going on in your businesses in the last seven days. And I'd look at it really, really quickly. And then quarterly, I have a conversation with, the, with my team, quarterly. I don't need to do it. They give it to me month, weekly. Um, every once in a while, I'll send a voice memo, right? But at the end of the day, just quarterly. You don't, you don't need to be doing it monthly unless you're an analytical. Who in here is an analytical person? Because I'm definitely not. 
I'm like, shoot, shoot, shoot. And then, oh, I ask, wait, we were supposed to aim? <laughs> okay. So, um, all right, getting back, getting back to this. So don't set up an LLC and have everything go through it. Your personal expenses, all those types of things, they need to be, um, if you are going to use them, like, for example, my wife and I are business partners. Okay. So if you guys go read, there's a really great book by Tom Wilwright. Okay. Tom Wilwright, just to be his client, by the way, their current setup fee before they even set up an LLC for you is $35,000. So they're definitely not the right people to go work with. Um, how do I know this? Because I was, I was with them for a while. They were a nightmare. But it's an amazing book. Tax-Free Wealth. If you guys have questions about write-offs, okay, and, and how, how all that works, Tax-Free Wealth is a really great book. It sounds like a book you'll fall asleep to, but it actually isn't. Tom, uh, Tom Wilwright is awesome, okay? He's rich dad, poor dad's like advisor. Smart guy. So I've got a wholesale business and I've now got a buy and hold business. And why should I keep, keep these two things separate, Tommy? Um, wholesale, buy and hold. Just the taxes are different. The liabilities are different, one. But two, the taxes are also different between short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. Okay, so my bookkeeping is going to be different. My, my records are probably going to be even different. And buy and hold is not going to have as many transactions in it, right? This is going to be a little bit slower type of thing. It's going to be a lot of, you know, making payments. This is going to have activity galore. So if I'm doing this, I mean, I've got marketing expenses, payroll, all sorts of stuff in this, this LLC. So it's probably smart just from an accounting perspective, right? just to have a separate bank account on both of these things. So if that's the case, forget about the, the liability and all that kind of stuff. Guys, I'm telling you, I did my LLC, PJ Morby did fix and flips, buy and hold and wholesale all in one LLC. Do you guys think I was having a great time on my bookkeeping or would you think it was a nightmare? Definitely a nightmare. Doesn't sound fun. No. Sounds like a typical client, actually, that comes to you guys. It's like, hey, dude, I've been doing it wrong for six years. Can you guys clean up my stuff? You ever or heard my, that? My favorite is the ones that are like, we don't have anonymity, but we didn't want a second entity. If we Wait, what? If want the anonymity, you got to have the holding company, and you have to make sure that the ownership is from the holding company. Raheem, I hear you saying you don't have the privacy, and... I, I see it. I see you, but we need a holding company. Without it, you're not going to have the privacy. You guys need a holding company. It's critical. We, we covered this already. Okay. You need a holding company. What am I paying myself? I should break down my tax return next time on prime time and show you guys my tax return. So I, I have a question about yeah. the setup. Um, yeah, go ahead. If we're, if they're all LLCs, yep. where, when do I pay myself? I know you guys have your Ooh, holding great company. question. Tommy, do you, do you guys follow the profit first model at all? Or do you yeah, guys know that? Yeah, our, our, uh, our CPAs can base it off that for you as well. Love it. Okay, so uh, Alexis, another really great book for you to read is um, Profit First for Real Estate Investors. I don't know if I, I think you've heard this story, Pace, but Jeremy Davis, yeah, when he was talking to us about his taxes, put his old CPA on the phone with our CPA and made him battle it out for his business. And we didn't know this until afterwards, but uh, he was talking about profit first and his old CPA was not familiar with how to, how to run the books. Do, so how, do you know where Jeremy Davis got that CPA? I don't know. Me. Oh, really? That was my old CPA. And when, when he had just, when um, Jeremy Davis had just come into the mentorship, I said, this is who I use for CPA. This is who I'm using for my, for all my stuff. And so he uses the CPA. And then six months later, I meet you guys and I try you guys out. We do business together for six months before I start telling my audience about you guys and my community. And Jeremy's like, wait, should I switch from Dustin to PCS? And I go, I did. So you should probably have a conversation and see what happens. And very much in Jeremy Davis form decides, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call two um, accounting companies and I'm going to have them get on the phone with each other and prove to each other why they're better than the other. <laughs> Classic, like zero, zero. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
very then, uncouth. Afterwards, he showed up at our office because he lives two minutes from. So he did all this interviewing and then showed up in the office afterwards to come <laughs> tell us about it, to make sure we were real and made us tour around our office. And yeah, it was it was good. It's a fun story. So, um, Alexis, what I'll do is I can break this down. Here's what I suggest you do so we don't overcomplicate this. This is I'll do a follow up to this and I'll show you exactly how I pay myself. I'll open up my bank accounts. You guys have seen me open up my bank accounts. Who was on that Zoom where I sent a twenty thousand dollar wire to a securities attorney like three or four weeks ago? Who was that on there? Like I'll show I'll, I'll log into my bank account. I'll show you we have a couple million dollars in there. I'll show you all that kind of stuff. OK, I'm so happy to show you guys my real bank balance. What's really going on in there? how I pay myself, all that kind of stuff. But today I wanted to keep it really simple. Okay. So how many LLCs do I need everybody to start in real estate, wholesale, et cetera? You should start with three. In the very bare minimum, if you just go, you go, look, I just want to be a wholesaler and I've got a tight budget. You need this LLC and you need this LLC right out of the gate. Yeah. You can start with the two for sure. Okay. You can start with two but I'm paying for three for Alexis okay. because she's becoming a, a budding leader. She's becoming a, a fantastic young, young lady. <laughs> somebody asked her, somebody said something to her last night. They go, wow, you're an, you're an amazing, you're a grown woman. And I was like, no, she's a young lady. I was like, don't call me a young lady. I'm a grown woman. I was like, oh, damn. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so how many LLCs do we absolutely need to start with guys? If you are on a budget, it's smart for you to start with two, okay? If you're not on a budget, why not just go to them and say, hey, let's just get this up. For me, I would start with three. But again, a lot of this has to do with budget. Um, people just starting out are like, dude, I know I need an LLC. I know I need all this stuff, but budget is a very important thing for me. I need to be budget conscious. So two LLCs. And if you're absolutely just barely starting out and you have almost nothing, but you want to get the ball rolling, then I would set up a holding company first and foremost, get the ball rolling on that. Do not, do not set up this LLC first. This LLC, the holding company needs to be set up first because that needs to be the LLC that owns this LLC on record. Okay. The name of that book, there's two books I suggested to you guys. Okay. Tax free wealth. Phenomenal read. By the way, I don't read anything. I just listen to stuff, but you know what I'm saying? When I tell people I read books, it makes me sound smart. Okay. Profit first for real estate investors. I'm actually named and quoted in this book. So I'm very proud of that because we follow this model of profit first for real estate investors. It's a great book. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Frank says, I was ill-advised by PCS and, and he set up my subsidiaries in Wyoming about a week ago. Frank, the way you fix it, here's what I love about PCS. Okay. One, if they made a mistake, we'll see if it's a mistake, could be a misunderstanding. But if there is a mistake, reach out to your freaking rep. Does everybody have somebody to reach out to at PCS, Tommy? Or are they just like Anderson Business Advisors where they're floating like a fart in the wind? They, they should. We were, we were even talking about potentially doing like group trainings, but this community is amazing. I love so many, so many names in this that I just already know. And you guys are so awesome that I, I told Pace last night, I, I don't want to change that. I want you to be able to reach out to a designated contact. Yes. So, okay, great. So guys, you have a designated contact. So if you have a question, a problem, an issue with PCS, this is a company that you can email and you'll get a response back within, what, what do you guys have a response rate? Like 24 hours, 48 hours? 48 hours. As long as it's not, don't email me on Friday at 4 p.m. and expect a, an answer on Saturday by 4 p.m., right? We so see Martin. Team Saturdays off. This is new. We used to only be Sundays off, but we're, we're Monday through Friday now. I can't believe it. I'm embarrassed by it. I think it's great. I went yeah. that one day I came in on a Saturday and I was like, holy crap, you have 40 people in here, dude. Do you not give these people days off? He's like, they want to be here. We can't <laughs> stop them from being here. Um, Sean Bolden says they even respond to texts. 
Um, so who feels like they're getting a lot of love and support from PCS? Even when you're like brand new. This is, I think this is the most important part about your guys' company, Tommy, is that even when people are just like, I just got an LLC set up. I have never done a deal. I'm not somebody who has a ton of money. You guys treat them with love and respect just like you would treat somebody like me with love and respect. As, as it should be. And that's where I think, I mean, even seeing some of these where I only have the one entity, like we, we want you to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. And like Pace said, there's, there's so many people that call and they're like, I want Pace's structure. And I'm like, all right, it's 50 grand. I don't, you don't want to do that. No, <laughs> You don't need that. Let's have the holding company, have the subsidiaries, have the registered agents so that you have the privacy and the protection but let's make sure that the money's flowing through the short term and the long term with your name and your address not being listed. It's okay, so here's what I think we should do. Okay. If you guys if you guys are a, a prime client, here's what I'll do. If you're a prime client, I'll open up my bank account. I'll show you how I pay myself, Alexis, and I'll give you that love and attention. And I'll sell, I'll show you how to so I, I'm with Chase, but I'm really getting sick of Chase. You want me to show you why I'm getting sick of Chase? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. This is the bull crap that I'm sick of. I'm getting to a point in my life where I'm like, yo, dude, I don't need to be involved in everything, but you guys over at Chase need me. It's like they want to talk to me just to follow up with me and be annoying, but he provides such great service. Let me pull this up. I'll give you guys a little bit of, of uh, this is so interesting. Um, Rod. Ella, we can, we can set up in any state. We can, we're, we're able to structure in all 50 states. Let's see here. Rod, this is too good. You guys just can't even freaking believe this. This, that this happens all the time. Um, Rod says, I'm going to pull this up. You guys can see And Rod, the guy at the bank's like, I paste, I really need to talk to you. Can you please come into the branch? <laughs> wow. Do I seem like a guy that has time to go into a bank branch nowadays, guys? Not a chance. No, 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 no. I do not have the time. Let's see. I wrote him an email. I want to show this to you guys because this is, I want to show you guys how frustrating it is. Here we go. This is it. Money. I am pretty organized. I can find my stuff pretty good. All right. I like Rod, by the way. Rod's amazing. And he does it. He'll come to my house a lot of times too. So I write on my email to Rod the other day. I go, bro, is there a way I can give Molly a power of attorney so I don't have to be involved? I can stop by Chase today and sign whatever you'd like, but can we please make sure that we have nothing else, please? I travel too much for my job to be, to be asked to sign things in person. It's annoying. As you, as you grow your business, guys, you're gonna, you, there's a couple of things you're going to need. You need convenience. You need a great user experience. Okay. And um, Corey Hicks says, can you fix an LLC that's already started? I have a, a few from 2016. Guys, how many people have called Prime and Prime has given you a consultation about an old LLC that they did not set up? Anybody get that love and support? Can I, can I clear something up with this as well, real quick, Pace? Yes. When you structure an LLC, it works like a birth certificate, right? Your name that you're born with, Thomas Thornburg is on my birth certificate. I can change my name, but my birth certificate will always be the same. Yeah. So even if we file an amendment to change it to be owned by a holding company, it'll change it in the history but an attorney worth their salt will be able to go back and see that previously with the paper trail. So just be aware of that, that it is doable. We can make those adjustments, but the history will still show that your name was, was the initial owner. So just be aware of that. And if you had someone else structure your entity, we unfortunately can't go in and make changes to another attorney's work. So, if it's our own work, we can make the changes. We can file the amendments. We can give you the advice and we're happy to talk to everybody regardless. But if it's an existing entity that another attorney or someone else did, we can't go in and make those adjustments. But we can give you the advice. We're happy to talk to you from an advice standpoint. 
Love it. So, um, I use guys, I use a company right now. We're switching over to them because I'm really getting to a point where I'm kind of sick of, um, chase and like physically needing me to do stuff all the time. We are switching to, um, it's their websites really weird. We, I, I had them set one up. It's called start with relay.com. They're awesome. We they talk, are awesome. We talked to them the other day. They are great. So start with relay.com. I'm actually going to bring them in as, in as a guest. Um, and maybe what I do, Alexis, we set up your bank account underneath Relay because you can do it all through digital. I am so annoyed by the branches that require me to physically go in there to sign things nowadays. It's like, dude, don't you have DocuSign? Like, why do I have to go do this? It's because Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo are so old school and they have practices from 20, 30, 40 years ago and systems they put billions of dollars into that they don't want to divorce and go create new systems. So they keep your physical requirement of coming in and signing stuff all the time. So I'm switching everything over to start with relay.com. Um, but we'll, we can have that conversation. So she needs to set up her other two LLCs in Florida, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. So we set those up in Florida. She then will have a bank account for both of those, Alexis. Okay. Okay. And you will have, actually what you'll have is when you have one bank account, you'll actually end up having multiple um, checking accounts and a saving account inside of that bank identity. Okay, so when you make your 20 grand, for example, right, you've got a deal I think you're making 20 grand on right now, right? Yeah. Okay, so guess what happens? What we do, I don't like this, but it's how we do it. It's how you're supposed to do it is the second you receive that money, you should take 15% of that and put that into one of your accounts and that's your tax account. You don't touch it. Okay. 15%. So uh, Profit First, the book that I told you to go read and write, that book will tell you exactly how to receive money into your bank account and how to divvy it up, how to pay yourself, all of those types of things. And it will give you very specific percentages. So what happens for us is by the end of the year, in all of our businesses, I've got three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in cash sitting in my tax account. Guess what I get in January? I get a four or five hundred thousand dollar bonus because I didn't end up having to pay taxes because I bought real estate. Okay, That's but beautiful. my partners and constituents, all the people I hang out with, they are not like that. They're pulling their fifteen percent right off the top, and they're ending up having to go out and pay that tax because they're not buying enough real estate. So. But that's what you got to do. I'll show you how to set up your bank accounts. I'll show you how to do all that kind of stuff. I'll show you how I pay myself on the next Zoom. Tommy, when do you think she'll have enough information to set up a bank account um, from you guys? Florida's a little bit behind. Wyoming, I can get back to you within about 48 hours. Florida, okay. it could be up to two weeks. So within two weeks, everything should be ready to rock and you should be able to set up, definitely set up with Relay Fi from the very beginning. I highly recommend that. It'll make it so much easier. Okay, cool. So um, JJ says, why Florida? Well, JJ, you must have missed out, bro. Uh, Alexis lives in Florida, right? So she, we want to have the LLCs where I'm operating. Okay, so you have the LLC in Wyoming for privacy, protection, et cetera. And then you have the LLCs. Hey, Whale, I told you to read a book. Go read the book, okay? Do yourself a favor, go read the book. You might not want it, but you wanna make millions of dollars and you got all these technical questions. Go read the book, Profit First for Real Estate Investors. It will answer every um, analytical question you have about what percentage, okay? <laughs> That's um, like, all no, three like LLCs my... will 100% have their own EIN. Is that correct? Correct. <laughs> okay. Well, I have my own operating agreement. Absolutely, three of them. Okay, so Andrew uh, so Souza says, I move a lot, Tommy. I need some help deciding what state I should set up my LLC. Is that something that PCS can help them with? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, the person earlier that said my subsidiaries are out of Wyoming, that was my first thought is, do you have a permanent residence? Because mm. there's, there's, uh, there's some people that we work with that don't own a house and just travel the nation in an RV and look for different real estate opportunities and travel to them and enjoy themselves as they go. Just total complete nomads. 
that still want the privacy and the protection, but don't have designated locations. So that is definitely common. Hey, Jen, I, you, you've asked this question a couple of times, and I thought we kind of closed by this, but your question tells me I have not done a good enough job. Will you unmute yourself so I can talk to you for a second? Jen? J-E-N, Jen. Yeah, hello? Hi, Jen, how you Hi, doing? Jen, how you doing? Hi, good. I'm gonna, ask you, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I'm gonna test you, okay? Okay. You ready to be stressed out? Uh, um, go for it. Yes, I like her spirit. So why am I setting up a, a Wyoming LLC in the first place? Um, t for privacy. Boom, okay, there's only four states that provide privacy, right? What are those states? Um, Delaware, Wyoming, Nevada, New Mexico. Dang, Jen's on it. You're freaking, you're batting a thousand right now. This is amazing. Okay. So your question was, why are the two LLCs under the LLC in Wyoming? Correct. Yeah. I was curious why we, you couldn't do all of them in Wyoming if they all provide the oh. uh, privacy. Well, Jen, here's the beautiful thing. When you pull up the LLC in Florida, Okay, let's say she sets up her wholesale business in Florida. Great question, okay? JJ, yes, you still need a UPS address, bro. I would never tell you something two weeks ago and then change it that quickly. Like I would have a whole entire dissertation of why I was changing it. I've been doing that for 15 years, okay? So super important, there you go. So Jen, when you're operating in a state, the state wants you to be incorporated in that state. They want you operating in that state. So when you pull up my LLC, for example, in Arizona, it will show the owner of that LLC. So let's, let's say it's 123 LLC owns the house on 123 Main Street, right? 123 LLC owns the house on 123 Main Street. I pull it up in Arizona and it's gonna tell me who the owner is. Who is the owner of that LLC that is an Arizona LLC? Who's the owner? That would be, it wouldn't show it, correct? It would show, yes, of course it shows who the owner is. Shows the owner is the Wyoming LLC. So then when you go to show, when you find out who the owner of the Wyoming LLC is, who does it then say? Mm, not you. It doesn't say because it has, a, the state provides the anonymity. Okay. Okay, so the gotcha. reason why you have the, the state, the, your state. So if you guys are in California, you're screwed. You're screwed in so many different ways, okay? But in California, your LLCs are very expensive. They're like $800, I'm so sorry. I don't know, you guys, your guys' state hates you. They hate you. I, you guys are like a disease to that state. That state is trying to get rid of you. They hate you. I don't know why you guys wanna live there. You can Just, at least write off the $800 now. You used to not be able to even write it off. Oh, right that's now. great. So it's they say the first year is free, okay? The first kick in the mouth, it's free. They let you Nowhere stop. else in the country is that expensive. People keep asking, what's the cost to set up an LLC? I don't know. Go to, stop going to Starbucks for two weeks and you'll pay for a whole LLC setup. Or at least that's how my household is. Okay? <laughs> it's not expensive. Stop going, to, stop going to McDonald's and asking for supersized meals. You know what I'm saying? Just a couple hundred bucks, depending on what state you're in. It's not a lot of money. Um, so... Jen, wonderful question. Absolutely wonderful question. Your question was, well, why wouldn't you just have all the LLCs in Wyoming? Well, you do need LLCs in the state you're operating and running a business in, okay? So that's why she's gonna have two LLCs in Florida. One's for wholesaling real estate, the other one's for buying and holding real estate, and they'll both be owned by everybody. What will they be owned by? In the side comments, please tell me, what will they be owned by? Is that, did, Jen's question, did that help everybody else out understand that connection a little bit more? Thank you for the question. I think a, a couple of people are gonna say yes to that. that. Yeah, that actually helped them out. JJ got it, perfect. I love those questions. I love Jen, she freaking batting a thousand, dude. Okay, so um, Tommy, what's the process? Like, I know I'm giving Alexis the super treatment right now. I'm gonna tell you a quick story, okay? So, um, my friend Pete Vargas, he has a business that I wanna purchase something from. And he says, Pace, I'll take care of you, dude. Don't, don't go to the website, I'll take care of you. Here's my assistant. I go, yeah, dude, special treatment? I love it. 
I love it. So five months goes by and I'm like, why have I not been able to buy this thing? So I send him a message. I was like, bro, I'm just going through the website. I went through the website. I immediately got set up with an appointment. I bought the thing and I've already made 27 grand in a week off the thing that I bought. Okay. So it's a story for another day. And I go, what? And I'm talking to Dolores, the person that's my account rep on the deal. And I go, what? Why did this take so long? She goes, because Pete gave you the special treatment. What he should have done is giving you the basic treatment that is the special treatment. You didn't go through the proper flow. These, there's systems and processes here that we follow, and Pete goes around them and makes your experience horrible. Okay? Guys, if you, guys, uh, hey, PCS or Tommy, do you guys order the EIN for your clients, or do you have them do it? We'll do it. Every, we're, do, we're doing everything. Guys, we're not letting you do it. Stop <laughs> it. If you are one of the knuckleheads that's creating your own LLC, get off my Zoom, get off my YouTube, get off. Go change your own oil, go drill your own cavities, go do all your stuff yourself. Okay, all the stuff that you guys are doing yourself, if you're the guy that's like, I'm going to set up the most important part of my business, go change your own oil, go drill your own cavities. Okay, do all that stuff. I actually think setting up an LLC is way more important than any of that crap. Okay. So Ed, Edward says it took an hour to set up my LLCs. Edward. Oh my gosh, bro. I, let's track each other for the next five years and let's see where we go. Right. This has helped me a lot. Stefan says, this has helped me a lot. Does PCS cater to non-residents living outside of the U S that's a great question. We can set up U.S. entities for international clients. We uh, we tried to do the whole Canada, U.K. and Australia thing, but we just can't find companies that we, one, enjoy working with, and two, that do a decent job. So if you need a U.S. entity or tax help, all 50 states, we got you covered. Internationally, we're happy to talk to you, but we can't structure you outside of the U.S. Oh, okay, cool. Great, great question. Good answer. All right. So getting back to the special treatment, I don't want to give Alexis the special treatment because I already know what would happen is she would get lost in the sauce. How do we get Alexis with a, a, a rep that's going to get her set up with exactly what we just talked about right here? I, I think you go through the same process. I don't, I don't want to Pete Vargas you. So go to that link, schedule a time. Start with prime.com. Go there right now, Alexis. Schedule a time. Start with prime.com. Yes, every LLC gets an EIN, but PCS will do it for you. Yep. Question. I've seen this, um, this question in the chat a little bit, and I'm curious as well. Like if I wanted to start something that was non-real estate related, like branding company, I put I, everything would it be underneath a... the same holding company. Sweet. Yeah. My holding company holds all my companies. It would, it would want to be a separate entity so that it doesn't coincide with your real estate investments. But part of the reason that we want to have the short term, the wholesaling separate from the buy and holds is the taxes are totally different as well. Your wholesales are 10 to 37% as ordinary or active income and your buy and hold and your passive is zero to 20%, depending on the income level. So liabilities are different. Tax rates are different. That's partially why we want to separate those out. Okay. So um, Naomi says, Cody Barton, that's my business partner, one of my business partners, used to recommend Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Do you still recommend we read that? No. You want to know why? Because Mike Michalowicz, the same author, wrote a book called Profit First for Real Estate Investors. And that is a fresh new copy specifically catered to you guys, real estate investors. So I would suggest do that one. Okay. At the time when Cody was promoting that and talking about that book, that real estate version did not exist. So if you guys are trying to get into real estate, which one would you rather read? Profit first or profit first for real estate investors? Real estate investors. There you go. Cool. Great question, Naomi. Awesome. Oh, that, that one's by David Richter. Richter. David Richter wrote it. My bad. Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate you. Um, which LLC should we use for a wrap? Tina, that would be a completely separate LLC. I have a wrap LLC. I have uh, 14 wraps sitting in an LLC right now. That I'm, they're holding notes that I've created. 
Okay, that's a separate LLC. Wholesale, you, for anybody that's not in here, the, anybody that has not watched my Zooms in sub two, my corporate structure Zooms showing my corporate structure, I need, re, I need to redo those because I did those two summers ago and I've probably built six other businesses and 30 LLCs on top of it. I need to go deep into that for you guys. I'll do that on another three hour Zoom inside of sub two, okay? Uh, so next week, are you traveling next week or do you, do you want to do some prime time next week? Um, I'm out of town next weekend. You want to do like Tuesday at like three? Do you have time on Tuesday at three next week? Yeah, that's, let me just double check, but I think that should work. I'm in, I'm in Utah on Tuesday. So that's a start. That's important. I'm excited in front of to a computer. hang out with you in Florida. Is that the next time I'm seeing you is in Florida? At scale and escape probably. Um, what time? Three o'clock Arizona time. Yeah, would that work for you? We do 3.30. Yeah, we can do 3.30. Or 4. 3.30 or 4. I can do 4 if that makes sense for you. That works better for me if that's okay. Let's do it. Tuesday at 4 o'clock next week, we're going to be doing prime time. For any client that's a prime client, we'll go through and do Q&A. Um, a lot of people have Q&A. We're trying to answer them as fast as we can, but we'll go through and actually do Q&A. So prime time, we'll do that next Tuesday. Okay. Um, who's going to be there next week? Absolutely. Give me a yes or a me. I want to know. Because if we're dragging Tommy out of his, his date night on Tuesday night. Every night's date night. What do you mean? Oh, dang. That's a great t-shirt. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Every night's date night. I love it. Will someone record that and send it to my wife? She doesn't think so, but I think so. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so Alexis, you're going to go through, uh, start with Prime, get an appointment set up. Um, Tommy, can you make a note with whoever Alexis gets put with that that bill needs to be paid for by me? I'm paying for that for Alexis. Yep, for sure. Thank you, Pace. I'm Thank bribing you. you. I'm. I'm. I. Next <laughs> time you run into a big juicy deal, you ha now you have to sell it to me. It's called blackmail. <laughs> or is that is that? It's not blackmail. That's bribery, right? That's bribery. <laughs> Cool. So let's so you'll, let's get her set up, and then what we'll do is next week, three thirty. Anybody that's a prime client, we'll do prime time. It'll be Q and A next week. So you guys come with your questions. If the questions have already been answered, prepare for me to be terse. Okay. What we should do is we should um, yes, prime time is Zoom all day. Zoom. We love Zoom because then we can bring you guys up here and we can actually break down your deals. It's going to be for prime clients only. Okay. Who's, who's setting up a call with Prime, by the way? Who's going who's gonna to join us at Prime? Is, if somebody can't get their booked call done by Tuesday, can we still get them the link? Yeah, I don't see why not. You're like, you're like I'm not the one that does that. <laughs> um, some, Pace is going to come with, uh, up with an idea. I don't idea. know how to do it, but I know someone that knows how to do it. So there you go. Make sure I don't forget. I don't want people going like, hey, I have a book call with, when's your book call, Alexis? September 1st. Okay, so, so six book, six days. Book a call today, and then I'll have Andy is her name. She's amazing. Shout out, Andy. I will have Andy pull everyone that books a call from today backwards um, and make sure they're on that prime time. If you're already a client, we'll make sure to get that to you as well. Guys, if you want, what we'll do is we'll do prime time a couple of weeks in a row, and we'll do general Q&A next week, and then we'll find another time in a, a week or two where we bring in Relay Financial, okay? And we'll talk about banking and all that kind of stuff. Would that be helpful for you guys? That'd be awesome. Just trying to do this for free, trying to help you guys out, trying to show you guys what we're doing. Um, it's a common question I get all the time. Alexis is one of my students. She's a rising star. She's out door knocking pre-foreclosures. You probably should know her. Um, okay. And what I would, what's your Instagram, Alexis? Is Alexis J. Morgan is your Instagram? Yes. And you guys speaking, should probably follow her. She's out there knocking doors and doing cool stuff. I actually just ran into a juicy deal pace. You and did? yeah. In big Florida? One. Big one. Foreclosure? Yeah. Can we buy it subject to or does it have to be a cash deal? Cash makes sense, but there's a big equity position. Okay, perfect. Huge. Can you text it to me? <laughs> yes. I would love um, to look at it. But more importantly, I want to teach other people how to go get big ones. Um, so tomorrow I'm hosting a free webinar teaching everyone what I'm doing in my door knocking business, in my door knocking venture, how I'm doing it, why you guys should be doing it. How, how do they get the so, link to that? Do you have a link to that? 
Yeah, let me grab it right now. Is the name of the webinar Big Ones? Get Big Ones? Or it should we, be. Or we like big ones? It really should be. Let me I grab it. Tommy. I got Tommy laughing. Big Ones Holdings. <laughs> Hold these big ones. Name the holding company. <laughs> <laughs> holding holding big there ones some of the most creative names i've ever seen in this or in this chat right go back go back through if you're looking for a name go back through this chat we lost 10 percent of the uh, of people in here there these guys are getting horrible <laughs> um okay so alexis has a zoom tomorrow guys she's going to talk to you guys about pre-foreclosures how to lock up big ones Okay. Yes. Uh, the link is in the chat, so don't ask for it again. If you say, Pace, where's the link? It's because you're not looking six inches up above you. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, Alexis, did you learn anything today? Absolutely. This was amazing. And Are you happy I took 10 years of mistakes and found PCS and showed you guys the way, the truth I and the I thank light. God for it. I thank God I, for it. it. Remember when I was on stage yesterday, I said, the way I introduced myself is the first time I introduced myself that way. I said, my name is Pace Morby and my job is to take my life experiences that took me 10 years of agony, pain, condense those down, down into um, education that can teach you guys how to do it in one year or two years. That's really all my job is, is just to help you guys out, do it faster than I did it. So um, amazing stuff, guys. We'll see you guys. Um, Alexis, when did you join Sub2? April 14th, 2022. Amazing. So she's newer, guys. We wouldn't even let her in because she wasn't even 18. <laughs> um, so, Alexis, we will be back next Tuesday. Okay. And we're going to talk about, we're just going to do general Q&A. So if you can't make it to that one, that's fine. But the week after that, okay, you should have things going and, and all that kind of stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to bring in Relay Financial and talk about banking. How do I pay myself? How are they going to are are they going to communicate with PCS all that kind of stuff we're trying to create a user experience that's all cohesive for you guys and make it super easy okay sweet thank you so much of course um guys give tommy some freaking love please give tommy some love this guy it's date night every night dude <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I'm going to text that to my wife right now. It's date night. Um, okay. So thank you, Tommy. We appreciate you tremendously. I have um, somebody asked, when is prime time? So prime time is going to be, hold on guys. Let me give you the link for prime time. I'll set it up right now. Don't leave because you guys will all be asking when is, where's the link for prime time? Do you like that? We call it that Tommy. I love that. I was on a, uh, I was on a zoom I think it was last week. I don't know. It feels every day is the same right now. It's, but uh, Alejandro, if Alejandro's here, what's up? He was like, Tommy from Pace Corporate Services. That's so great. Was Alejandro Alvarez? Yeah, it was. I freaking love him. <laughs> He's awesome. Hey, um, there he is. Is he in here? Yep. No, that's Alejandro Salazar. I love him too, but I, it probably was Alejandro um, Alvarez. He's, he's a, he's a leader in sub two. He's around all the time. All right, fun. guys, you guys ready for the link? Here's the link. I'm going to give it to you right now. This is next Tuesday, prime time, 4 PM in the only time zone that matters, Arizona. There you go. Next Tuesday, prime time, 4 PM, Arizona time. There's even the zoom. I, even I have to save it. Let's all take a moment and save this real quick. Yes, please. Oh yeah, and I have people over in YouTube on YouTube World there. Give me just a second. I'll put this over here too. Um, so Cynthia on YouTube just asked a question of, "Hey, what if you're not okay?" Um, Pace, you didn't answer my question. Well, guys, I can't see you over on YouTube. You guys didn't come into the Zoom for some reason. I don't, you guys didn't look at my stories today. I gave you the Zoom link for all three hundred of you guys that are on YouTube. You guys screwed up. I gave you the Zoom link on my public. Um, Instagram stories. Okay. So I, I haven't been seeing your questions on YouTube because you're knuckleheads and you did not come into the freaking zoom link, you knuckleheads. So next Tuesday, we're going to be um, in, uh, we're going to be doing prime time. There are a couple of people on zoom on uh, YouTube asking pace. If I, let's see, who's doing, da, 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 where'd she go? Okay. D says they made an appointment before this call. Okay, great. Pace, if my 
consultation with Prime is after Prime Time's debut. Can I still get the link? Yes. I just gave you guys, I gave everybody the link. Okay. There's the link. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. I want to make sure you guys are there. We're going to go through general Q&A. It's going to be great. Appreciate you guys. Tommy, as always, bro, you, you and Steve are like my favorite human beings on the planet. Pleasure as always. Thank you thank for you. having me. It's good seeing everyone. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so guys, if you are a sub two student, I'm heading over to the Keegley event right now. My wife is speaking on a panel and then um, I am moving our Q&A to next, not next. I'm moving Q&A to Saturday. I'm going to be doing Q&A on Saturday night, which is very rare for me. But um, I was going to do Q&A tonight, but I really want to go and physically support my wife who's speaking on stage tonight. So really important for me. And definitely, if I want date night to be every night, I, do, I should probably go and um, support my wife. Don't you guys agree with that? Um, I want to support my wife the same way Adriana and her husband support each other. Freaking, that was such a great story Adriana threw out there. It inspired me. It was awesome. Um, appreciate you guys. I'm trying to work so hard for you guys. I want to make sure that you guys are skipping steps that I, you know, unfortunately had to go through. And at the time, YouTube wasn't really a thing when I was going through all this crap and I wasn't able to be educated properly. So I appreciate you guys coming in here. I really wanted to, I'm spending the money on Alexis Morgan's um, thing. Do you guys want me to tell you exactly what it costs after I pay the bill for Alexis Morgan for the people who are curious? Because some people are not signing up for PCS because they're worried about like how many Starbucks drinks they're not going to have for two weeks to sign up for something like this. Um, but I'm happy to do it. Okay. $3,500. Oh my gosh. Wow. That would be a lot of money. That'd be, I could go buy a car with that. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Um, you guys are the freaking best. And I will see you guys soon. Hopefully some of you guys are going to be going to the um, Arizona Keeley meetup. And if you're not, 